Most of the time when people go Black Friday shopping, they buy things that might actually be useful. But that's not the case for me, because when I went to Micro Center and saw this on sale for $100, I thought, that's a video. This is the Asus something, and it is a fully functional, brand new Windows laptop that I bought for $99. And this actually sparked a very interesting internal monologue for me, which is if you are shopping on an extremely low budget, whether you wanna get a laptop for yourself or for your kids or for your parents or what have you, if you only have $100 to spend, should you buy a new Windows laptop or do you buy something like this, an old unibody MacBook Pro? It's an interesting discussion, and I don't think it's as clear cut as you might imagine. So let's get into it. Today's video is sponsored by Grammarly. Grammarly helps over 30 million people improve their communication skills boosting the efficiency and confidence in their work. With the holidays coming up, things can get very busy very fast, but with Grammarly monitoring my writing for spelling, grammar, punctuation, readability, and vocabulary, I can get through writing scripts, sending emails, and preparing video outlines much faster. What I love is that Grammarly isn't just checking your syntax, it can actually help improve the tone of your writing. Grammarly Premium introduces full sentence rewrites, which in this case helps me optimize my tone for maximum confidence, as well as removing unnecessary clauses and jumbled wording. Grammarly is free to download and is easy to integrate into your daily workflow. Work smarter, not harder, and get your work done faster with Grammarly. Sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium by checking out the link in the description below. And now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so first up, let's see what you get in the box with a $100 laptop. Well, first of all, look at this very fancy opening mechanism. I mean, it looks like more effort went into designing this box than into designing the laptop itself. But here's what we get. It's an 11.6 inch laptop and well, it's plastic. It's got a rubberized bumper around it and ah, very unremarkable design. We get some stuff, some booklets, cool. And of course, we get a charger. Now, this thing actually has a USB-C charger for 100 bucks. Not bad at all. But when we actually open the thing up, well, it's not great. Hello, Mr. Bezel. Welcome to $100. This is this is what that gets you. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a plastic fantastic here. I honestly did not have high expectations, but this is pretty, this is pretty basic. But when you bring the MacBook in for comparison, I mean, the differences are clearly apparent. You're talking about new and inexpensive versus used and depreciated, but it's an interesting trade-off. I know it's, you know, comical to look at a $100 Windows laptop and it looks pretty crappy and it's kind of silly with an 11 inch screen and it's easy to make fun of. But when you're talking about a price this low, honestly, there are trade-offs in both cases. I mean, for example, this is a mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you spent $100 on one of these, which you can definitely do, you were probably expecting to get a dual-core i5, four gigabytes of RAM, and typically a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, with the Windows laptop, this guy has an Intel Celeron N4500, four gigabytes of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. That, by the way, is crucial because you might think that we're talking about hard drive versus SSD, but this is eMMC. It's pretty crappy. It's very low end. It's basically like you're running on a flash drive. It's faster than a hard drive, make no mistake, but yikes. Not great. And then we get onto the displays because honestly, there's not as much difference as you might hope given the 10 year age gap between these devices. Over here, we have a 13.3 inch 1280 by 800 display. And this guy is rocking an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 display. 
That's right, this is a resolution that was plaguing Windows laptops 10 years ago. Well, for $100, you're gonna still have to put up with that. Now, the thing that was actually quite shocking about this laptop is that it was on sale for $99. Supposedly, theoretically at one point, this commanded a price tag of $299. Now at that point, I would say absolutely not. Forget about it. But $100 is a very different story. And you do get some things that you don't get with a used offering. For example, this guy has a USB-C port. We do also have two USB-A ports, Ethernet, a full-size HDMI, and of course, a headphone jack. So this thing actually has pretty solid I.O. But I guess you could say the same thing about this old MacBook Pro with a couple exceptions. Obviously, we don't have USB-C and we also don't have HDMI. Instead, we have a Thunderbolt port. But since we're on the topic of specs, I figure we should touch on performance because this might be a brand new laptop and it in fact has the new Intel sticker which tells you that this is a modern powerful CPU. It's a 10 nanometer chip, so it's gotta be powerful, right? Wrong. I ran Cinebench R23 on both of these laptops and the MacBook Pro, despite being 10 years old and using an Ivy Bridge Core i7, actually outperformed the Asus, whatever this is, by a lot. Yeah, it was 741 for the Asus and 1694 for the MacBook. So that is not close. This guy, as far as I can tell, is fanless. There's no seams or vents, and that is not a very powerful result. I can't believe that this was ever $300. I mean, that seems criminal. I guess the whole image that I'm getting of this thing is just kind of why. Why buy a new laptop for $100 when you can buy a used laptop, not just a Mac, but a PC as well? This has sacrificed everything, screen, screen quality, performance, RAM, storage, battery, build quality, design, aesthetics. It's everything is a sacrifice here. And I don't think it's a sacrifice that you really need to make. And that's before we get onto the elephant in the room, which is upgradability. Cause this is a hundred dollar laptop that you can actually do quite a bit too. I've got mine fully upgraded with a terabyte SSD. 16 gigabytes of RAM, but for the PC, well, I think we gotta open it up and see if you can do anything in this at all. All right, well, seems like a simple enough opening procedure. We just have a couple of Phillips head screws. Okay, they are captive screws. That is interesting. Okay, now we've unscrewed it. How do I, what do I do? Does the, does the palm rest come up? Does it wanna come up? Oh, okay. All right, we got some ribbon cables. We are in and, oh wow, uh, <laughs> that is basic. I guess you're really seeing what you get for your $100 here. Take a look at how much space there is that's just empty, right? We've got a separate board over here for our right side IO, which just has a simple little ribbon cable here going across it. Tiny little logic board. And sure enough, yep, no fan. No real accessible components apart from our Wi-Fi module. It looks like they're actually using some weird thermal pads. Look, there's there's the other part of it is stuck over here. Are they diffusing heat with the metal backplate on the keyboard? What? Very tiny heat pipe as well. This is this is basic. Right, so I hope you enjoyed our little dive into the inside of this cheap $100 laptop. I can honestly say that having examined this thing from a usability perspective, a performance perspective, a tearing off the keyboard and looking on the inside perspective, my big takeaway is just, who is this for? I mean, I guess off the top of my head, the, the people that would be interested in a device like this are people who are not tech savvy and would just wanna buy something for their kid to do very, very basic tasks on. Perhaps this is for the education market and would be bought by a school, for example. 
Or maybe you would buy this for your elderly grandparents, except that they probably couldn't see what's on the screen because it's so small and pixely and... Yeah, I don't know. My take on this is I understand on a very basic technical level why a product like this might exist. But there's a reason why Micro Center had essentially a whole palette of these that were on sale for a third of their normal listing price. And that is that this is not a compelling product. This is not something that a normal person should or would go out and buy. And so it's a little bit almost misleading to see this in a store being like, hey, I'm a real laptop, when that is, is a stretch. This thing is less powerful than like an iPhone 8. And, and I don't think that it's worth your time at all. I mean, obviously I picked it up because it was a $99 laptop and who's gonna say no to that? The correct answer of course should be you because if you have $100 to spend on a laptop, you can do a lot better by buying something that was a lot more expensive, whether it's a Mac or a PC. I mean, honestly, looking at these two laptops and seeing that they're the same price point it's pretty crazy. This is my obvious choice. I mean, an aluminum unibody construction with Mac OS, with an upgrade path. Every day of the week, I'm gonna pick this. Oh, but at least the screen opens 180 degrees. They put a sticker on you to let you know. It's like a smartphone. Look at that, it's like a Blackberry. So I'm curious to know what you guys think of this whole situation. Which of these two devices would you pick if you only had $100 to spend? Or you can provide a third option. I mean, honestly, maybe there's something to be said for buying a cheap used PC or maybe even a Linux machine if you wanna get super creative with it. I think there's a lot of options at a $100 price point, which is not something that you could say for the majority of computing history. It's pretty crazy that you can buy, whether brand new or used, a perfectly usable, arguably functional laptop for this little money. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.